1939, two days after the Nazi invasion of Poland, Whitaker Chambers sought a meeting with Assistant Secretary of State Adolf Burrow. At that meeting, Chambers, a former member of the Communist Party, who claimed to have left the party in 1935, named Alger Hiss, then working in the State Department, as a communist. Burrell saw Chambers' allegation absurd, stating, thought I was dealing with a man who thought that he was telling the truth to the FBI with the same story, claiming to have no documentation of Hiss's alleged treason, and the matter was dropped until an opportunistic young from California named Richard Nixon. The House on American Activity, Alger Hiss Whitaker Chambers case in 1948, what the Bureau does is provide information to Nixon during the onset of those hearings in August of 48, and it does so indirectly. Uh, an FBI agent who had been the source of a report written by Father John Cronin for the Catholic bishops acts as an intermediary and provides information to Father Cronin who relays it on to Nixon. So what you have here is a system which Nixon acquires indirectly but also non-traceable to the Bureau. Three weeks of spy charges and countercharges reached their climax. Whitaker Chambers, confessed ex-communist, has sworn under oath that Alger Hiss, former high State Department officer, was a red. Hiss, here entering, has denied it under oath. Now they face each other in public for the first time. The committee asks Hiss... Uh, Mr. Hiss, uh, would you kindly stand up, please? Stand up. Have you ever seen this individual who is standing? I have. Do you know him? I identify him as the stripling. As who? As George Crosby. His sworn testimony directly contradicts Chambers on almost every point, from the disposition of his car and apartment to his party connection. Hiss names 34 prominent Americans with whom he worked, including Senators Vandenberg and Connolly, and former State Secretaries Hull, Statinius, and Burns. Ask them if they ever found in me anything except the highest adherence to duty and honor. Then the committee can judge and the public can judge whether to believe a self-discredited accuser whose names and aliases are as numerous and as casual as his accusations. The other side of this question is the reliability of the allegations before this committee, the undocumented statements of the man who now calls himself Whitaker Chambers. Is he a man of consistent reliability, truthfulness, and honor? Clearly not. He admits it, and the committee knows it. Chambers, who has already sworn that he pleaded with Hiss to join him in leaving the party, is recalled in the middle of the dramatic nine-hour session. Asked why he singled out Hiss, he replies, The story is spread in testifying against Mr. Hiss. I'm working out some old grudge for motive of revenge or hatred. I don't hate Mr. Hiss. We were close friends, but we are caught in the tragedy of history. Mr. Hiss, represents the concealed enemy against which we are all fighting and I am fighting. I've testified against him with remorse and pity. Why is Hoover's FBI helping Nixon at this time? And clearly it's not doing the true administration a favor. And it's involved in part of its attempts to suggest that there's a very serious internal security threat. And that's the politics that the Bureau is involved in across the board in the post-war period. These documents were fed out of the State Department over 10 years ago by communists who were employees of that department and who were interested in seeing that these documents were sent to the Soviet Union. Hiss was convicted following the well-dramatized uncovering of five rolls of microfilm that Chambers claimed he had hidden in a pumpkin. Three of the five rolls contained no information at all but were U.S. government patents. The other two rolls would be used to convict Hiss of perjury. 
The crucial evidence concerns the typewriter that was produced at the trial on which the secret documents were alleged to have been typed. Was it Hiss's own typewriter or another? Hiss's lawyer continued to investigate the question of forgery by typewriter. The conventional statement that a typewriter can be identified from all others, that its typescript is like a fingerprint in uniqueness, is his conviction that that didn't seem quite right. It led him to have a mechanic prepare deliberately a fabricated typewriter, merely from typescript of the machine that we had put in evidence. And that was so successful that experts we consulted thought that if they hadn't been tipped off in advance, they certainly wouldn't have noticed the difference. And in the motion for a new trial, uh, we submitted samples, blind samples from both, and challenged the government to distinguish them. The challenge was not taken up. But the evidence that he then developed, or found, discovered, was first that the number of the machine, 230099, was a serial number that could not have been on a machine that had been given, that had been bought by my father-in-law and given to his daughter, my wife, Wasn't because it? it would have been manufactured after the date of the transfer. In a conversation with John Dean, Nixon gives a clue as to a possible explanation. The typewriters are always the key, said Nixon. We built one in the Hiss case. Well, remember that Senator McCarthy came upon the scene quite late. Uh, he should have known about the communist issue in American politics and show some evidence of it before 1950. He called uh, uh, the newspaper, a newspaper in Madison, a pro-communist. In fact, its editor was a member of the Communist Party. But he doesn't really get into it until he stumbles on it very late, just a few days after Alger Hiss is, is uh, convicted of perjury. And this is early 1950, it's February. And he goes to Wheeling, West Virginia on a barnstorming tour no one else wanted to go on. It was a Lincoln Day speech that he gave and stumbled onto the issue of communism. He had been trying since entering the Senate uh, to make a name for himself, uh, to become somebody, and uh, he'd been unsuccessful. And suddenly he was on the front pages and President Truman was 